Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Rando Geek. So it's official. Dish and EcoStar have finally gotten the FCC approval that they were waiting on. So it looks like several divisions of the FCC have signed off on the merger for Dish and EcoStar to merge, which is now seeming to pave the way for the transaction to close before the end of this year. They're saying that the FCC's Office of Engineering and Technology, the Space Bureau, and the Wireless Telecommunications Bureau granted the requisite license transfers for the companies. There was a public notice, the FCC said during, uh, I guess, granting the applications will serve the public interest. Dish and Echo Star announced the merger agreement back in August. And what they're saying is essentially a recombination of the companies, which had originally split back in 2008. They mended the agreement on October 2nd, with Dish becoming a Wally owned subsidiary of Echo Star. One once all the regulatory approvals are uh, ascertained. So they're saying investors have been worried about this deal closing mostly because it's essential to Dish's near term funding and investors have been focused on what might go wrong, according to a research note published today by New Street Research's Jonathan Chaplin. So they're saying that the FCC approval removes the biggest hurdle to closing, perhaps the only hurdle, he said. Closing the deal will remove the biggest hurdle to DISH being funded through 2024. The next hurdle they need to clear will be when the uh, 2 billion matures in December of 2025, which uh, DISH has almost two years to figure things out. So based on New Street estimates, DISH needs to raise a little under 1 billion to get through the 2025 maturities. And they've analyzed how DISH can sell some non-strategic assets to get them there so uh, a lot of good stuff here in this article you know uh, i'll leave the rest for you guys to read i'll link it for you it's from fierce wireless but i want to touch up on this right here so very good news for dish to finally get that approval this really this really does need to happen it needed to happen and i'm glad dish was able to accomplish it and get the deal finalized before the end of 2023 Dish has a lot on their plate. They've been struggling for a very long time and the odds are really stacked against them. I think most of you listening to this right now believe Dish will fall flat on their face, that they're pretty much a done deal. And like I always say, you could be right. However, this deal at least gives them an opportunity to kind of, as mentioned in the article, jump around some of those hurdles, go around some of the obstacles that have been currently blocking them. You know, this will allow them to utilize the funds from Echo Star pour it into Dish, and continue to build out their native network. Results for native network on Dish have been pretty good. Most that have been able to get their hands on it say it's it's good. It's working fine. It's doing better than some of the other carriers at times. So I think if Dish can continue to, to build out, get it into some of the cities and states that are really looking forward to it, we might see a turnaround. Now, this is not guaranteed. The debt is real. They have, a, like I said, a lot on their plate. They're still trying to figure out how they're gonna get their hands on the 800 megahertz, which they say they need desperately. And we all agree that they need this in order to make their network better and more efficient to continue that build out that we're waiting on. Many of us are still waiting on. So without a doubt, they need to purchase that. They also have the FCC requirements due in 2025. So. I don't know how they're going to do this. It's it's like I said, a lot on their plate. You know, the boost sales coming from Amazon, they might be helping a little, probably not enough to really pour in or rake in enough income to get them to that level. So more than likely, they may have to sell off some of their weaker assets. We've already seen them do this with some of the overseas uh, assets in Puerto Rico, and we might continue to see a little bit of this. But at the end of the day, that doesn't make dish weak. It just means you have to restructure when the money's tight you restructure a little bit you find ways to make that old money new money and you just keep moving you just keep moving so we'll see what happens i think i wouldn't count dish out yet all right it seems like every time we count them out they always find a way to worm their way through and continue to keep moving correct me if i'm wrong but i think i stand correct on this. Every time someone says dish is done, they do something 
to keep them in the game. So don't count them out. You know, don't count them out just yet. I'm not saying they're going to be around in two years. What I'm saying is we don't really know just yet. Anything is possible, especially when you have such a motivated company like this. And remember, Dish is a huge network. They've been around for quite some time now. They do have a lot of money and they have enough to play with. Now, this build out is definitely dragging them through the ground. They bit more than they could chew when they when they initially said that they wanted to become a wireless carrier. They weren't wrong. It was a smart move. However, they've made a lot of mistakes and those mistakes have cost them penalties. Now, if they can put their their mishaps behind behind them and move forward, restructure, we'll see. We'll see what happens. At the end of the day, that's all we can do. You know, keep in mind that any of these carriers can have these issues. You know, T-Mobile, as large as they are, they're struggling as well. Believe me, there's desperation in a lot of the moves that they've been making. Same thing with AT&T, and even Verizon is being very cautious. Now, don't get me wrong, these companies are profitable. AT&T, Verizon, certainly T-Mobile, they're all very profitable, but they have to look at the future. So when they structure things and when they make plans financially, it's not just about today. They're thinking about a year from now. They're thinking about two years from now. How can they make sure that their, their balance sheet doesn't drop below a threshold they're uncomfortable with seeing? So there you have it. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.